Thank you. Um, it's going to be very difficult because I cannot make appear, disappear anything. So, but I'll try now. I'm also the last obstacle towards your lunch, so uh, unfortunately I can only give you some food for thought and uh, uh, nothing else. But uh, yes, I will not actually talk about politics nowadays, but about branding. And um, basically the place brands have in uh, our lives, our existence. And actually I want to raise another question, a different question, is what place do we have in a world of brands? So you see it's a bit different, it's different. It's not about marketing, about branding as a discipline, but more almost philosophical. And um, so branding is a humanism that might ring a bell to some of you, um, maybe some of you that are f um, familiar with philosophy, with French philosophy. Um, Yes, there is a famous uh, French philosopher you probably all know, Jean-Paul Sartre. And Jean-Paul Sartre wrote this, uh, this masterpiece called Existentialism is a Humanism. And um, now, existentialism is a, is a humanism. What does, ha does it have to do with branding? Well, first of all, um, the concept behind existentialism, and Sartre was uh, one of the leading figures of existentialism, is that the existence is preceding the essence. So the existence is preceding the essence. So it means that first we exist and then we start to discover the world and eventually we, we give a meaning, we give essence to the world. We define our lives. And so it is very humanistic because it tells that individuals have the power to define their lives. Um, now what has this to do with branding? Well, first of all, there's a famous quote um, of uh, Jean-Paul Sartre. Man is nothing else but what he makes of himself. So. Again, what does this have to do with uh, branding? Well, I think that this self-defining um, self process, this self-actualizing uh, actualizing process, the, the moment that we define ourselves to become uh, some, someone else or to, to give meaning to our lives, but that is actually what you do with branding. Think about personal branding. Think about self-branding. This is the way you want to, uh, what you want to become and uh, the way you want to shape your existence. So you might think, okay, that's uh, maybe a bit broad and uh, it only concerns a certain kind of people, maybe in a certain type of industry, and branding is, does not affect all of us. I mean, does it? And you might think of some very uh, famous, um, famous people, for instance, in the, f in the fashion industry that made it as a brand. So first they, they, had, they were humans and then they, <laughs> they were brands. So basically they, they used their names to uh, be fashion icons, to be brands. And, um, and to sell a lot of products. So think about someone like Karl Lagerfeld, Karl Lagerfeld, uh, fashion designer. He doesn't even need his, his name anymore, his surname. Karl is enough. I mean, he's marketing now a lot of products just using the name Karl. And he's actually very lucky because um, other fashion designers have actually uh, lost the rights to, to use their own name. So that raises another philosophical question. I mean, if you cannot even use your own name anymore, it's a bit complicated. So that's, of course, um, a very famous example, and there are lots of examples in the fashion industry that are, uh, of course, becoming brands, humans becoming brands. Think about Yves Saint Laurent or other uh, famous uh, brands nowadays. But I want to talk about uh, someone else. About there is another story I thought that was really interesting to illustrate this. And uh, maybe uh, some of you, yes, of course, everyone knows him, we know. Um, maybe some of you know this person, Zaya, Zaya. She's a phenomenon. She's a phenomenon, uh, especially in France, because, um, well, her story started, it's actually a sad story, because she was, um, uh, she was a call girl, an escort girl, and what happened is that, um, uh, well, she got into trouble, or she had an affair with some famous people, uh, some footballers from the French national football team, and the problem is that she was under 18, so, so you see that, that that brought to, to, to real scandals and, uh, and the trial is not over yet. So, um, so that's where her fame started, as an escort girl. Well, in, in, why am I speaking about this? Well, it's a more tabloid thing to speak about. Well, because Zaya made it as a brand. So she started as a, as a famous escort girl and uh, she was on all different papers in all the tabloids and now eventually she made it as a fashion icon. She became a brand. She has her own fashion show, her own fashion collection. And not only that, she is even endorsed by very famous people like Jean-Paul Gaultier, like uh, Karl Lagerfeld. So 
she's well respected. So she's not, uh, she's not a, a call girl or even a prostitute like some people might think. She, she really has become an icon. And uh, some artists are even considering him as something very special, as, as you know, some, uh, the essence of a brand. So think about uh, Pierre Gilles, who a French um, artist that uh, are using her for a lot of uh, art photography. So here you have an example where you see that uh, a human being made it, gave some meaning to, uh, to, to her life, to her existence, and became a brand. It's a form of branding. Now, okay, this is all about fashion, about uh, uh, the fashion industry, about, um, well, it does not really affect us. Well, there are other sectors in which you might also think about branding. Uh, for instance, politics. Political branding, that's nothing new. I mean, we know about political branding is something that, uh, that exists. I mean, people are, uh, have a lot of examples about, for instance, the, the Obama campaign. Uh, that's the uh, Obama 2008 uh, logo. Looks very much like the Pepsi logo. Huh? And, um, and so it's, uh, yeah, politics is uh, basically a, comp a competition between uh, uh, famous brands. And why do politicians do that? Why are they branding themselves? Well, perhaps because they want to simplify um, our task as citizen. Because political programs are very complicated. They are um, uh, not, all, not everyone is interested in politics, first of all. So what they try to do is to simplify their, their own essence. They want to, to, be, to become brands because they want to be recognized. Uh, think about the Belgian Prime Minister, Elio Di Rupo. Everyone knows him in Belgium. He's not so famous in, well, maybe now he's becoming more and more famous. But why does everyone recognize him, at least in his country? Well, because it's very easy to recognize him. He's always wearing the same bow tie. Yeah, and he's using the bow tie as a mean of communication. So when he, when he was the president of the Socialist Party, it was bright red because he wanted to show that he's a, he's a deep-rooted socialist. Now that he's a prime minister and has to represent all the Belgians, well, the bow tie varies. I mean, now it becomes dark red, sometimes purple, because he doesn't want to appear only socialist, but more all-encompassing as a, as a politician. So this shows you that these little tricks that I use uh, in branding in general are also very useful for politicians. Okay, so... This is very specific. We are speaking about uh, politics, about fashion. How does it affect uh, everyone, all of us? Well, maybe we have to take a step back and think about, um, think about the, basically the, the environment in which we are. What if um, branding would be a way to adapt to our environment? Why that? Well, because nowadays, consumerism, consumerism, so the the ideology, the ideology of uh, consumption has become the main narrative. And what, what do I mean with that? The main narrative because consumption is not only about shopping, not only about uh, um, having these uh, customer habits and, uh, and knowing exactly what you want to buy, products, etc. No, it has affected diff different areas of uh, our lives. Think about art, think about culture, think about education. Everything has been colonized, shaped by consumerism. And brands are nowadays everywhere. Um, there are, there is, I just want to speak about one example. When I was a student 10 years ago in Louvain-la-Neuve, it's a, it's a Belgian city, which was a 100% pure campus. You could only find students there, and uh, with their rights and special traditions that no one understands and that they actually enjoy. Um, even it looks like slavery, but anyway. But um, so, so it's very interesting because it was like a, a little, you know, a parallel dimension only for students. Very well. Well, now, 10 years later, it has become a giant commercial mall. 10 years later, uh, students do not have a beer between lessons, classes. They go shopping. They are not so much students anymore. They are consumers. Customers. So you see how this very preserved environment, a student campus, has become um, merchantable. So it has become a, a place for brands to exist and to colonize more and more the environment. Okay, that's one example. But think about this very ex this experience we are having now. Isn't TED the epitome of intellectual branding? Isn't TED um, telling you you have a format? You have, there is a, a schedule that you have to respect, there is a packaging, there is a branding, 
And everywhere in the world, where you go, even if you have a TED experience in Buenos Aires or in uh, Jakarta or in Athens, you will find sort of the same environment, the same packaging. It's like going to a McDonald's uh, in to, you know, if you, if you want to have some, some Big Mac in, in, uh, in Beijing or in Berlin, you will basically, you know that you will find the same product. Well, it's the same with the TED experience. So a journey into, well, a journey in, a journey in the making is a journey into the TED brand. It's a branding experience, it's an intellectual and inspirational experience. Sorry for this mise en abîme, but, uh, yeah. Um, but, yes, there are some other um, examples of why branding is so interesting. Um, because it has, of course, it has anthropological consequences. Because it's not so much about branding uh, specific products, but it's, it's about the way the Western human mind nowadays functions. Uh, it's about making shortcuts, because brands help us to understand the complexity of the world around us. The world is very complicated, and brand has become a sort of, branding has become a sort of lingua franca, the, the, the language that everyone is speaking nowadays. It's a communicational paradigm. So if you want to make the world understandable, uh, different areas of society understandable, you can use branding because you can simplify the, the, the uh, environment. It's not about augmented reality, it's about simplified reality that you reach with branding. So think about some consequences. Think about the way we meet people, the way we, um, I don't know, uh, we meet our girlfriends or boyfriends or why night stands. Um, it's, not, it's not so much by chance anymore, is it? I mean, it's not so much, uh, oh, uh, great, I just, uh, I just met someone and, and, it, and it works. No. The first thing you do, you go on Facebook, you check the profile of the person. Did he manage to brand himself in a proper way? That's the first thing. So what are we doing? We are scrolling. We are looking at profiles. We are liking or we are not liking. We know exactly what we want. It's not that we are desperate because we're on dating sites. We are not on dating sites because we don't, we don't find anyone. No, it's because we're curious and we know exactly what we, know, what we want. We, we know how to read the price tags. We know how to read the labels. And um, I, this is just one example. There's a, a French um, dating site called uh, Adopt a Guy. Adopt a Guy <laughs> is, uh, is there for, for women, actually, to go shopping. They can shop, they can, they can find the, 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 the good guy they want, and uh, they can leave some comments, they can give some marks, and it's actually, it gives a lot of power to these, uh, to these girls. And, uh, and this, this website had a little happening um, uh, when, when, I think it was for the launch, and they had these guys, real human beings, uh, in, in a form of uh, packed, you know, in a showcase, um, and so you could, you can, you know, uh, like products, you can watch them like brands and, uh, and take pictures. And uh, so you see that this, this sort of um, philosophical construct that I'm telling you about, about the fact that branding and that consumerism is affecting other areas is actually uh, not so crazy. And, uh, and this is actually the logo of the website. Huh? So uh, just, uh, yeah, I mean, what else do you want? So... Um, yes, it's, it's very interesting because branding has a lot of consequences and um, our, our friend, the, the, of the former Pope, before he had this burnout, um, um, he understood that uh, branding is also about maintaining your community. Um, yes, so that's why he decided to go on Twitter and to tweet with his followers. You know, because Christianity already had a lot of followers, but uh, now with Twitter, uh, Twitter, it has even more followers. Um, no, no what, I w what I mean is that uh, I was speaking about love and um, think about friendships. You know, friendships in a way, um, nowadays, are a form of co-branding. That's horrible, huh? co-branding. It means that, uh, well, what is your score in cloud, for instance? Um, well, I'll tell you if we can be friends, you know? Because I want to know exactly the profile of the person I'm friends with because it's <coughs> added value and uh, maybe he's interesting. Maybe he posts some interesting material on his Facebook account. Maybe he has a, an interesting Twitter uh, discussion going on. So it's all about the way you portray yourself. Um, and being a good friend nowadays is very important. But what is being a good friend? Well, before in the past you had what? 
is five, six friends, okay, um, if you were lucky. Huh? Uh, sometimes you had just one or no, or no friends, uh, that happens. Um, well, nowadays, teenagers have 600 friends, 1,000 friends, 2,000 friends. So being a good friend is being a good community manager, okay? So the first thing you have to think, are you a good community manager? Because are, are you updating, are you entertaining your friends? Are you a good brand? Well, then you maybe also are a good friend. So yeah, uh, the former Pope really understood that, so he, ha he needed to, to update his followers wi with some prayers. Um, yes, I mean, is this something that is going to change? Well, I don't think so. I don't think so, because the next generation, the teenagers that are around, well, they are born with this uh, uh, paradigm of communication. They know exactly that they have to become brands. They know exactly how to behave. Or if they don't know, they will learn it the hard way. Uh, they, they know exactly that if they do some crazy stuff uh, on Facebook, if they post it, the whole class will know about it. And the reputation will be demolished. Like for a big brand, it is very dangerous for your future. It is very, very dangerous for your reputation and eventually for uh, your career, and so branding has been a second nature, and is now a second nature for a lot of these, uh, uh, of these teenagers. But is it only negative in the end? Well, it also has, of course, um, a very powerful message, because uh, to become your own brand, to become your own brand also gives you a lot of freedom. It gives you the chance to really design your life. It gives you the chance to make something out of your life, and the only thing you have to think of is that um, it's a communicational paradigm. You have to learn the language, you have to learn the language, you have to understand it, and then you can maybe start to shape and design your life. Think about Zaya. Think about our friend Zaya that we were talking about just before. Where would she be without branding? Where would she be? I mean, probably she would still be selling her body. Well, now she's selling her name. Guess what? Thanks to branding. She, she manages to do that. So. Why, why, are we using, why is it important to, to understand branding and to use branding? Is it actually only to, to get better jobs, you know, to shape your professional profile, to, to have a better career? That sounds very rational. You know, that's actually too rational. It's like uh, uh, you will only be thinking about getting a great job. Well, or is it because we are attention whores? Because we want to uh, throw to the world everything that we are doing, the pictures and... Is it because of that, or is it simply because it gives us the chance, the opportunity to uh, become who we are? To become who we are. Yeah, I know. I started with Sartre, I finished with Nietzsche. Mm. Yeah. And just before lunch, yeah? Um, yes, because branding is, in a way, a tool to become who you are. Uh, think about what Sartre was saying about the essence, the meaning. That is important. A lot of people exist, but only a few people actually really live and give meaning to their lives. So basically, learn the language, be fluent in branding, shape your own reality. Thank you.